I think you'll find that our paper both extends and complicates some of the previous papers that we've heard yesterday and today. All right, so our study is situated in research on the social determinants of health. And this body of literature looks at how economic and social opportunities and resources influence adults' health status. So the vast majority of the literature in this area has looked at the ways that formal education is related to health, specifically formal educational attainment. So by contrast, we were interested in looking at whether the skills in literacy, numeracy, and technological problem solving were associated with health and how, and also uh, whether post-initial learning was associated with health. And uh, we're using the OECD term, which refers to participation in formal and non-formal non education after the highest degree completed. So we could also use a term like adult education and training, et cetera. So we have two sets of research questions that run parallel to each other. The first has to do with literacy, numeracy, and PSTRE skills. Uh, and yesterday, Margaret introduced the acronym POSTER. Uh, those of you who speak Spanish may notice that we're just one letter away from postre or dessert. So I would like to introduce that as a friendly amendment. Uh, so our first question was, are literacy, numeracy, and technological problem-solving skills associated with self-rated health after controlling for various sociodemographic characteristics? Second, does the relationship between skills in these areas and self-rated health vary across racial ethnic groups? And it was important to examine this because the research on formal educational attainment shows that in particular African Americans at increasing levels of education receive fewer health benefits compared to their white counterparts. And similarly, does this relationship vary across levels of formal educational attainment? So do people at lower or higher levels of educational attainment accrue the same kinds of health rewards from developing these skills? Our second set of questions had to do with participation in post-initial learning. And so first of all, which types of post-initial learning activities are most strongly associated with self-rated health after controlling for various demographic characteristics? And which types of uh, post-initial learning matter most for the health statuses of different racial ethnic groups? Oh, okay. And lastly, which types of post-initial learning matter most for health statuses of people at different levels of formal educational attainment? So our dependent variable was adult self-rated health, which many, many studies have shown is a very robust and strong predictor of all kinds of health outcomes. We had a number of independent variables. So for research question one, it was literacy, numeracy, and PSTRE, or Bostre scores. Um, for research question two, it was participation in five kinds of post-initial post learning during the previous 12 months. Participation in distance education, on-the-job training, seminars or workshops, courses or private lessons, and formal education. We again had two moderators. One was race ethnicity, and you can see our uh, five racial ethnic groups here. Other race included Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, um, American Indian, and indigenous uh, populations. And then formal edu educational attainment, we had six categories all the way from did not complete high school, which was the reference group, all the way to master's degree or higher. We controlled for a variety of demographic variables that have been shown to influence adult health status. So this helps us um, to really determine how these skills and adult learning activities are or are not related to health. So our analytic approach included uh, ordinate, ordinal logistic regression models. In the first models, they were unadjusted, so without any control variables. Then we introduced all of our control variables, and we also had interaction models for our two moderator variables. We used PIAC tools and PIAC reg and STATA to account for plausible values, and the samples were weighted. 
Okay, so for research question one, these are the unadjusted results without any control variables. Oh, and I'm sorry that got cut off at the end. Um, I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. Okay, um, so what we found is that literacy scores for people in the good, fair, and poor health categories were significantly uh, low, low, that should be higher. No, 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 that's right. Uh, we're significantly lower than in the excellent and very good categories. Uh, and excellent and very good, you'll see, are, are very similar. Similar pattern for numeracy, that numeracy scores for good, fair, and poor were significantly lower than excellent and very good health categories. And the same kind of pattern for um, PSTRE scores. Again, good, fair, poor, significantly lower scores than excellent and very good. Okay, so what happens when we introduce control variables? Um, sorry, so this is for the unadjusted model. So what this shows is that a 10-point increase on the literacy scale was associated with 10.5% greater odds of being in a better health category. For numeracy, it was 8.5% greater odds, and for uh, PSTRE, it was 7.6% greater odds. When we introduce the control variables, you see a very different pattern. So numeracy and PSTRE are no longer significant. Only literacy is significantly associated with adult health status. And so for a 10-point increase on the literacy scale, respondents had a about 2.5% greater odds of reporting a better health category. Okay, it's important to uh, realize here that, um, so literacy had a 2.6% greater odds, but many of the control variables that we looked at had a much stronger association with health than did literacy. And so this shows some of those. Uh, so you'll see under educational attainment, having a master's degree or higher meant that they were 212% um, uh, more likely to report a better self-rated health category. Bachelor's degree is very high. The ones in red were basically the ones that were highest. Uh, and uh, my last one got cut off at the bottom here. Um, I believe the bottom one was health, health insurance status, and I think that was 5% five, 5 so having health insurance was 5%. Okay, so our associations between health and these three skills, do they vary by race, ethnicity, or formal educational attainment? The answer is mostly no, but uh, there are a few wrinkles. So PSTRE scores are positively associated with health only for people with a master's degree or more, but the effect size is very small. So what this means is that if you have a master's degree or higher, you're accruing health benefits from higher problem-solving skills. If you have anything less than a master's degree, you're not seeing health benefits from that after controlling for all of the background characteristics. Also, people from all racial, ethnic, and formal educational attainment groups accrue equal health benefits from literacy after accounting for all of the background characteristics. So this means there, is, there are no diminishing returns for racial, ethnic minorities, regardless of your race, ethnicity. You're getting the same kinds of benefits from literacy skills. Numeracy, though, was not associated with health for any racial, ethnic group or any formal educational attainment level after all of our background characteristics. So research question two. Here we have participation in post-initial learning, and so workplace training was by far the most common activity among the respondents, followed by seminars and workshops. And in the unadjusted model, we found that four of these, four of the five adult learning activities were associated with better health. So distance education is the one that was not associated. 
However, after uh, introducing all of the control variables, only one post-initial learning activity was still significant, and that was courses or private lessons. So those who participated in this activity had 59% greater odds of reporting better health than those who did not participate. Okay, and again, we're looking at the moderator variables of race, ethnicity, and formal educational attainment, and whether those uh, moderate these relationships at all. Again, the answer is mostly no. However, participation in formal education was a weaker predictor of health with people who had a high school diploma than for those with less than a high school degree. And again, respondents from all racial ethnic groups and educational attainment levels gain equal health rewards from participating in courses or private lessons. Uh, so this is good news in terms of equity across educational attainment and race ethnicity. So areas for future research. We were very surprised to see that numeracy and PSTRE scores were less strongly related to health than literacy, and so that's definitely an important area for future research to understand why that's the case, especially given prior research that emphasizes um, like the, some of the examples that the previous presenter gave um, about all of the ways that numeracy and technological problem solving are involved in health. Uh, but according to this data set, um, there is no significant association between those two skills and adult self-rated health status after all of the control variables. Secondly, why is it that only the most highly educated are accruing health benefits from higher PSTRE scores? And one, uh, similarly, what is preventing people with less than a master's degree from converting or leveraging those skills into health benefits? So what, what are the blockages that aren't allowing that to take place? One hypothesis um, that I've seen in some of the literature is that this could be due to a vicious cycle of digital exclusion whereby people who don't have access to the internet or smartphones in the first place are therefore less able to use those and less able to use those um, to benefit their, their health. Uh, so that would be something to investigate. Unfortunately, the PIAC doesn't tell us anything about the content of the courses or private lessons that people are participating in. So that would be an area for future qualitative and or quantitative research to find out what, what are these uh, courses. And in addition to the content, how does participation in these activities improve health? So what are the pathways? Is it because of the social networks, the um, cognitive, or other kinds of skills that they're developing, psychosocial or material resources. So what, what are the mechanisms that uh, these activities are associated with better health? In terms of PIAC analyses, there are several directions that we could go with this research. One is to substitute nativity for race or ethnicity. So do these skills and adult learning activities matter more for U.S. or foreign-born adults, or are they gaining equal health benefits from these skills and learning activities? Do our findings pertain to other countries? Uh, we wouldn't be able to use race ethnicity, but we could use nativity. And we found that merely attending formal education courses does not predict better health. However, it m could be the case that respondents who actually complete their formal education course or complete a full year of additional study, that they might report uh, better health. Uh, so that would be something to investigate in the future. Also, we found that employment status, specifically being retired or disabled, eliminated the significance of participating in formal education. So that was the main reason why formal education was not associated with better health. So if we only look at working age adults in the PIAC database, do those who pursue formal education report better health compared to those who do not? We could also analyze healthcare utilization uh, as an outcome of interest. So do limited skills impede people from using healthcare services even after accounting for their background traits? 
And the USPAC National Supplement Study will include unemployed, younger, and older adults, among others. And so it, particularly with changes via the Affordable Care Act, it would be interesting to look longitudinally at how access to health insurance might change relationships between health indicators, basic skills, and post-initial learning. I'll close with a few implications for policy and practice. So what our analyses show is that literacy does matter for improving self-rated health, and this is for all racial, ethnic, and educational attainment new, uh, groups. So that is the good news. The complication uh, here is that, or I, I should add, literacy is also more important than numeracy and PSTRE skills. So th this points to a need for literacy instruction and ongoing skill development in terms of uh, being able to improve adults' health. However, literacy was not among the strongest predictors of health in our analyses. So there were various control variables that had larger effect sizes, which suggest additional domains or options for policy intervention. Some of those control variables cannot be changed, uh, you know, nativity, age, and so forth, but some of them can. So one of those is increasing college access and attainment, and that is likely to have a multi-generational impact, not only for the person completing college, uh, but also for their children. Expanding ESL instruction, which we've heard from various other papers today and increasing access to health insurance. Uh, so those were the three control variables that are, are amenable to policy intervention and that also had a stronger effect size than literacy. <clears throat> the importance of participation in courses and private lessons was also vital for self-rated health. What we found is that blacks and Hispanics and people with low levels of educational attainment were the least likely to participate in these activities. And so one, idea, one option would be to increase participation by these groups as a way of helping to improve health. Um, so for example, this chart shows the percentage participating in courses or private lessons, and so blacks and Hispanics were much less likely to participate. Uh, and findings were similar for educational attainment. So in conclusion, we found that literacy and courses or private lessons matter for adults' health status, but we still need to know a lot more about why they matter and the mechanisms by which they are related to adult health. Thank you.